Good morning. It's uh, a cold and frosty morning. I was not expecting this. So, the best way I've found for defrosting a uh, sawmill, obviously I wasn't expecting it to freeze. Um, I've tried several different things. I've gotten caught a couple times. I've tried, sorry, my neighbor's junkyard. Um, you look at our junkyard. <laughs> um, I've tried doing heat gun. I've tried doing the boiling water thing. Um, I've tried space heaters. And basically the best thing is just start the engine. This is best by far. Now it's not quite, it's not quite cold enough, uh, it didn't freeze the tanks or anything, uh, but those lines, especially on the loop miser, it's really sensitive to uh, a little bit of frost and the line that actually goes to the tip, to the nozzle is real small, it's a quarter inch, well a quarter inch outside diameter, and the tip is really small, um, so, and it's copper, or brass, it's a brass tip. Um, so it doesn't take much to freeze it, um, especially that line. The, uh, that's not that big of a deal to defrost. And uh, actually one more thing. Uh, one other thing to show you I've done. Um, now preferably I purge it with antifreeze, but stuff happens, don't always remember. I routed a new line there, and so if push comes to shove, I've got a second line already routed. Um, so if I can't get that line defrosted, I can uh, I can just swap the swap the line, put the new line on, because um, that line can be pretty hard to uh, to defrost. Usually the pump, um, you know, you can stick a space heater in there or or, or something like that and, and kind of heat it up. Um, but doing that, you know, that's a way better heater than a space heater. Um, ask me how I know. I've done the boiling water thing. The problem with the boiling water is when it's frosting, when it's cold, the boiling water, it freezes. It, it just doesn't work. Um, I suppose you could boil antifreeze and that might help. Um, I don't know. I've done the heat gun thing, which is a lot, you know, localized, but I was risking burning stuff. Actually, there was um, one of the little washers on the um, on the tank spout. I burned one of those because um, I, I wasn't paying, I didn't move it fast enough. And um, yeah, antifreeze, putting antifreeze in there is the best, but it just gets expensive. So, um, I don't do it unless I think there's a chance of it. And I've tried to mix it because again, it gets expensive. Um, you know, putting a gallon to four gallon or something like that, or, or two, two to two gallons or something like that. Um, and with that, I've just run into problems. Like I thought I've purged it with any freeze and I didn't purge it long enough or, uh, or I guess it didn't mix good enough or something like that. Um, so the best thing is just straight antifreeze. Well, by that I mean washer fluid, once you enter for your washer fluid, um, just to make sure that it's there. And I've got the extra tanks. I'm standing farther away so you, so you can hear me. I got the extra tanks, and in the wintertime, I'll just put one of those tanks filled with just straight antifreeze. And ideally, when I'm finishing up sawing for the day, the last two or three cuts, I'll just 
shut off, I'll just switch the valves over. Um, so I'm still using the lube and um, just the last few cuts will be with the antifreeze and the antifreeze will stay in the system. And that's worked out really well. Um, but like I said, I mean, it's April 1st today. I don't know when this video is gonna be posted, probably, probably be later. <laughs> It'll probably, maybe in time for next, for next winter. Um, but uh, it wasn't supposed to be any more frosting. And here it is. So it kind of caught me off guard. Now you obviously got to do this at your own peril. Don't give me crap. You do what you want to do. Uh, I found this worked out good. That was at a horrible location and we got delayed. So I was supposed to come back the following day. So I wasn't really paying attention, looking too far out, but we got rained out that following day. And it, it was like three days later before I had a, actually had a chance to go back and do it. And there a storm came in and it was like 17 degrees when I got there. Um, so, you know, stuff happens, you never know. Um, and uh, that took a little bit longer. It took maybe 20, 25 minutes uh, of idling, basically under the cover. And the, the thing you gotta worry about is the exhaust. At least on the diesel, the muffler's right there. You gotta make sure that, that cause that's gonna get hot and it could burn your cover. Uh, so you don't wanna get to that point. Um, at that time, I took a stick or something and I stuck it in there just to kind of put a little bit of spacer between the two. Usually I keep this tank full of antifreeze and I do straight antifreeze because I've tried to mix it before and I've mixed it wrong, I've kind of messed it up. So usually I'll keep it full and then basically the last two or three cuts, I'll just switch, I'll shut the valve off there and I'll switch this on so that, that purges the system with antifreeze. That way I don't have to like purge it later and just waste all the water. Um, Kind of purges it as I'm as I'm finishing up, um, but it's April 1st, and here in North Carolina, I wasn't expecting it to freeze. Um, it hasn't been freezing the last couple weeks, so I, I thought we were done, and uh, kind of caught me off guard. Um, so anyway, that's the whole point of this thing, um, and yeah. Anyway, so I hope this was helpful, and uh, if you found this video uh, because your sawmill is frozen and you're trying to figure it out. Um, sorry to hear that. Good luck, it happens to all of us. Uh, but this is the best and fastest way that I've found uh, to defrost it. So, good luck, thanks.